Let's talk to Mike Neville, retired Scotland Yard, Detective Chief Inspector, of course. Mike, very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. So today is what I would call whatever the opposite of a red letter day is. 1,700 criminals being released out of prison uh, to wander the streets of Britain without really any kind of preparation on behalf of the parole board, without any preparation uh, from probation, without really any idea of, of who they are, frankly. Well, we can gamble, Mike, can't we, that there has been no proper risk assessment around this. We've already seen this, not just like criminals who have uh, committed non-violent offences, there's violent criminals as well being yeah. uh, let out. And your previous guest referred to the misery of these people, and, I, and that's what I would call them, they're misery causers. So what we're told is oh, some of these are only low-level offences and this sort of thing. But what they'll be, they'll be released back to council estates where lots of vulnerable people live, lots of people live in fear, mm. and these people be out again, thieving, dealing drugs, burgling, stealing from the local shop, threatening people, and just bringing people down. And what forever frustrates me is that the people who sit in offices and the MPs and, just, and judges who make these decisions, it never affects them. They're never released to the nice little villages or wherever they live. It's everybody else who has to put up with this awfulness because you know as well as I do that people have got to commit 40, 50, 60 offences before they're ever locked up. Yeah. And if they're convicted of 40 offences, that means they've done... 400 offences. Right. And it's really sad, I've got to say. Well, two of the people who are eligible to be released, and we don't know if they are going to be released, is one is Connor Shaw from Rotherham. He's in the papers today. He was jailed for 32 months for two counts of actual bodily harm on his ex-partner. Um, in a statement read out in court, she said, I'm scared that when he is released there will be repercussions and that he will want to get his revenge on me for being in prison. Connor is a psycho and he frightens me. I'm afraid that one day he will end up killing me. Now, how many times do you see those statements after somebody's been murdered and you go, and oh, nobody yeah, did anything? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and there'd be less to be a big inquiry, Mike, and the people who were released in will all sit there with a sad face yeah. and then we'll be told that there was uh, lessons learned. And not only will he go be back and threatening to his partner, he will be a misery to everybody. There'll be a Rotherham council estate now where he goes back to uh, and, and causes all sorts of uh, trouble for, for, for everybody. And it's very frustrating for the police officers. The police get a lot of stick. Yeah. But what, how, it's annoying that, you know, you catch these people, you bring them to the court, you have them put in, put in prison, and then they're free back to do what they're doing. So the police are running around in sort of an ever-decreasing circles right. trying to catch these people for no point, really, because yeah. they'll be out soon again. Here's another charmer, Shane Riley, 44, from Swansea. Um, he's serving barely nine months of a 23-month sentence, admitted causing uh, assault, causing actual bodily harm, common assault, making threats to kill and criminal damage after headbutting, punching and kicking his former partner when she broke up with him. Great. Again, more people in fear. And we'll, we'll also be given some lies about, all oh, these people, they'll all be electronically tagged, so if they go to the wrong place, they'll all be arrested. I can tell you now, there's hardly any police officers to attend things like burglaries and robberies rather than ca catching people who breach the, the tag. And, and, and often these criminals are wise enough to know to remove them and, and put them on the dog so the dog runs around the house and they can go off and do what they want. And, and so the public have been put at risk. And we've got a, a crime epidemic. We've had a, a Home Secretary who was referring to this, to all the shoplifting, you know, as, as uh, how bad it all was, how much has gone up. This is not going to be solved by releasing nearly 2,000 criminals. Right. The way to solve it is to build more prisons. And yeah. this could be done very quickly. These people could be employed to build their own. You know, like we all remember the film The Dirty Dozen. They, they don't have a bed to sleep in until they build, build the, uh, the, the prison itself. Yeah, right. Let's get moving with new prisons and lock people up who bring misery to communities. Exactly right. Because at the end of the day, you know, we've got enough problems with the parole board releasing people. I mean, they're now releasing a guy called Stephen Ling, which is not connected, obviously, to this, who's been in prison for quite a long time. Stabbed uh, a woman 60 times, right, uh, and raped her and murdered her. Um, they reckon he's all right now. I mean, I'm sorry, if you actually think about what it would take to stab somebody 60 times, I don't think that person is ever going to be all right, and they don't deserve a second chance, do they? No, they don't. And, 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 and you, you know, Jewett, you, you, she was, like, stab, I say stabbed 60 times. It's quite incredible. Her mother is still alive. She still fears this, this man. 
And what gets me, Mike, is when you release people, you, you're taking a gamble. So if you release a, a thief or a burglar, they might do it again, but they're not going to kill somebody necessarily. Hmm. This man, you're gambling that this man is going to come out. You say, to stab somebody 60 times, that takes a long time to do that. I've seen somebody stab somebody 45 times. Quite incredible. You must be very a very violent man. Yeah. But you've got on there, the report there, it outlines that one of the psychologists said, oh, he's uh, very fit to be released and all this sort of thing. Well, do you know what I suggest? They build, a, a, put a porter cab in, in her garden hmm. and he lives next door to her and yeah. her family. If she's so convinced this man is okay, and as she says, can be managed yeah. in the community, let her do it. But they won't. He'll be back out. He lives up in Cumbria or Northumberland. Right. He'll be back to some council estate there, and God only knows what he's going to do next. No, exactly right. We've got a live shot we're just watching there of uh, Brixton, uh, HMP Brixton uh, in South London today. Uh, releases are expected across the morning, so it'll be like that, those scenes from the films, won't it, when the guys come out with their little bag uh, ready to go back into the community. Only this time, we won't really know uh, how to make sure that they don't reoffend? Because we've already heard the probation officers saying at least well, probably a third of these men getting released will be back straight in back into prison because they'll reoffend again. Yeah, because I've, I've read about one of the prisoners who's saying, "Look, I've got nowhere to go." So when he's released, he gets a bag of clothes, five quid in his hand, yeah. and then he'll be sleeping rough. So th th his only option, in a sense, mm. is to go out and commit more crime. So it's just like some vicious cycle of yeah. stupidity. What is being achieved here? So, so people see the, the public sit at home and oh, see right. some grandmother out. being. There we oh, go. Yeah, the, covering his face, no yeah. doubt. He'll be back. Don't, yeah, don't welcome worry. back to the free world, my son. With, with not what will he be given here, what will be given very much. And so it's a joke. This, I mean, I can't believe I'm, I'm sorry, I can't believe I'm watching this, Mike. They've just really, I don't know who that is. I don't know what he's been doing. I don't know what he's coming out to do. I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? And the police have just stood around there, and he, he'll be doing uh, back, back, to, back to where he was from. But the real worrying thing, as I say, is these people are released without any risk assessment, without any stability in, in their life, so they can actually try and change and stop doing what they're doing. And, and, and we've got the public, we're seeing a grandmother locked up for putting nasty words on Facebook mm. and, and these rioters being jailed for incredible amounts of time, where the public would think, well, I'd like to see all criminals jailed for this sort of thing, and very, very quickly. I mean, the public will be saying, these guys have been released. The two violent men at Manchester Airport who, who they knocked out two female police officers. Yeah. They've still not been charged, and so they see all this like weird system going on where some justice applies to some people very swiftly, right. and then other people the justice doesn't apply very much. And even if they get put in prison, then they're released. And I really do fear for society that people are seeing that the justice system isn't blind. It isn't fair. Mm. It is. It's acting in some strange way and it differentiates between different types of people. Well, you mean like a sort of two-tier system, Mike? Is that what you're saying? Well, exactly. I mean, we're told <laughs> that the Assistant Commissioner, Twist, he was saying there's a multi-tiered uh, yeah. system. I think we don't need, need multi-tiers. We don't need two tiers. No. We need one tier where everybody is treated impartially and we see justice served and communities made safer. The reason for those prisons is to keep the community safe. You'll have old Boffin saying, oh, we've got to rehabilitate offenders. And it may be, maybe so. But the facts are, when they're locked up behind those gates, they can't steal from shops, they can't rob or rape people, they can't burgle mm. houses. And that's why they should be in there and kept in there for a substantial amount of time. Yeah, absolutely right. Mike, good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. Mike Neville, retired Scotland Yard Detective Chief Inspector. We've been watching their uh, live footage uh, of Brixton uh, Prison, HMP Brixton. And they've got a sliding door there. I think they might as well replace it with a revolving one uh, because apparently there's going to be a lot of people coming out that way this morning uh, and nobody knows where they're going, what they're going to do, and nobody knows to a large extent even who they are.